Hello and welcome to the Wine Stains Podcast. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Connor. Collectively, we're known as the, the Parkers. Parkers. We're husband and wife, business owners, and multi-passionate people here to discuss life, travel, entrepreneurship, and the beauty of wine stains. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of Wine Stains. On the uh, uh, there's two percent German listeners that listen to our podcast. Okay, well you analytics. also like okay. So our intro is obviously pre-recorded because it's the same Hi. on every episode. And Connor's the Danke. one that wears headphones, and then he just <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> you are such a. <laughs> You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. How do you do that? Did you stop it? No, it's just right there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm speechless. Like you can't you can't make this up. But our hotel room is now covered in red wine. Like I'm to the point where I'm like, is it just not meant to be that we drink wine during the episode? Because it's all over the computer. It's fine. It's your computer's fine. It's all over the cooler. The computer's fine. You should be worried about the bed sheets and the and the cooler and the towel that's now very stained and the chair, the whole side of the leather chair. Are you narrating this? Yeah, I am. The whole I'm narrating this. I have Dodger on top of me. I have the computer on top of me. I have the thing still going. The whole side of the chair. Do you see the leather? Um, Kaylin, how are you feeling tonight? Is this still a test? We're just gonna go for it. It, it. it is what it is. You know, it's it's the whole getting ready to get ready thing that I think we talked so this about. Is or isn't a sound check? Well, I was. I I don't know. I'm just looking at the things. But what I was saying was, you know, the whole getting ready to get ready thing. Like I think we talked about in one of our episodes. Sometimes you just gotta press record and go. You know, so we're we're live right now, and what we're doing is we're picking back up off the heels of a catastrophic wine spillage in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. And obviously we named this podcast wine stains because we were like, Oh, that was so funny. And you know, drinking wine is great. And how can you be mad when you spill wine? But like, this was so unexpected and <laughs> so bad after like a long day of travel that it was, well, just, think, it was hard to come people, back from. I think people are thinking that we're doing it on purpose now. Like I, so, I, I mean, I, I really don't know exactly where we left off at, but if you're just now joining us in the pod, which, by the way, we're live on all channels. This is the first podcast Obviously that we're... because they're listening to it. That would be impossible <laughs> if we weren't. <laughs> no, but what, I, what I'm saying is this is the first... Oh, yeah, this, this is first the episode first that, episode yeah. okay, you're right. in which we are live in the fact that people know... Like we've actually shared it ...what we point. have been hunkering down in our basement doing for yeah. the past couple of weeks... And it was funny. We don't have a basement, but well, we metaphor. It's a metaphor, okay? Um, it, it, the basement of life is where we were in. But um, man, there, there's just so much to talk about right now. I feel like I want to talk about that. I want to obviously talk about the wine stain I, again. It's also so we're now. I wouldn't even tell. We're in, we're in the Ozarks. <laughs> yeah, so we're we're filming episode five from Lake of the Ozark, Missouri, which is a city in Missouri. If you which are is fan, not which is not Asheville, which is not Nashville, which yeah. is where we so we're like we're like two or th- we're three stops removed from the initial wine spill in which that they yes this is the official seventh day of the road trip that we announced in episode four. We've gone from Asheville. No, no it's a sixth day. Seven because tomorrow will be eight days. We're, Thursday, we're, Thursday. We let, but we okay, but today's Wednesday. But Thursday would be the eighth day because there's only seven days in a week. So if you overlap days, okay, then well that becomes ju- no, the no, eighth hold on, day. No, no, I'm sorry. You just <laughs> I said. Know, it's fine. It took no. me a long time to realize that too. Thursday to Thursday, if you actually go into the next Thursday, that would be the eighth. That would be the eighth day. No, I think that you are. Caitlin. Thursday, Friday, no, but you're counting, Saturday, you're, but you're, Sunday, you're Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, seven days. Caitlin. Yeah. You can't count Thursday as a day. That was when, our first day of the trip. Yeah. We traveled and we went to dinner that day. That was our 
anniversary day. You can't turn six into seven. I'm just saying. Okay. Anyways, we're going to move okay. on from that. But so All we've right. gone from Asheville, North Carolina to Nashville, Tennessee. Shout out the to Biltmore. To shout out every, uh, shout out if you're we'll a fan. We'll come back to that. Shout out if you're a fan by now though, because we're live. You know that every time we say shout out, it's you a sip drink. of whatever yep. you're drinking. Mm -hmm. And then we stayed shout out in Franklin, Tennessee, because we were too tired to drive. Oh, you, and you skipped over Nashville. I said Nashville. Yeah, but, but Nashville like deserves its own episode. Nashville was great. Well, Our we're second time back, back to, back to we're Nashville. We're just providing like the okay. boom, boom, boom. How we got here. So we, yeah, exactly. So we did. How I met your mother. In, pretty much. <laughs> in Franklin because we were too tired to drive. And then we did a very long drive. It took us probably eight hours to get to Lake of the Ozarks. What's so funny, Missouri. and fellas, you might be able to empathize with this. When, when your lady says, we had a really long drive, we all know that I drove the entire time. I worked and it was stressful. I know. I'm just joking. Shout out to all the... But you did. I will give you yeah. a lot of credit because I did tell him that I really needed to go to Best Buy and I was stressing out about it because my computer was dying. My hotspot was not working and I had client deadlines and he knew I wanted a Best Buy and while I was on a client call, he just pulled off the interstate, took us to a Best Buy while I was on the call, walked into the uh, into the Best Buy Got me the converter and the charger that but I you needed. Ju you, you just said got me the converter like they knew what we were talking about. So, you know, long story short, we've been on Anyways, the road. We've been on the road loved. for six days, not eight or whatever seven. you said. But not, not seven. Maybe. This is our seventh day of the trip. This is how dates work. Okay, it's you know, okay. I know it's blowing your mind right now. What, what are you, a Mayan? Remember the, Mayan? remember the Mayan calendar? When was it? Remember, I was in high school, I feel, 2016. The Mayan calendar saying, where they if thought... If you go like Saturday to Saturday, like you book a Saturday to Saturday yeah. trip, it's actually, it's seven nights, but it's eight days. Once 40 you days and 40 nights, Saturday, shout out Noah. It's the eighth day because there's only seven days in a week. Well, all I know is Rome wasn't built in the day, so you can take that for what it's worth. So anyway, okay. we are now in the Ozarks, and I don't know if we need to talk more about that wine spill because I feel like it happened a year ago but it was just a couple of days ago. Yeah, we're going to move on. It was a real Long thing. Long story short, it, it was, was a real thing. It was traumatizing. It was traumatizing. That's why we didn't finish the episode. Wine everywhere. You're talking we're fine. on the bed sheets, on the carpet, on, and Caitlin has learned from experience by now what to do. You um, didn't get any incidentals on your credit card, did you? I think I might have actually. I, really? Yeah. I looked at it and it, there was a... The, like the the total charge was was more than I've ever like been charged before, so I think yeah, so. I just into that. That's yeah sad. yeah. So I'll call the hotel. But anyway, Asheville was amazing. That, that so Asheville was our first <laughs> stop. It was our anniversary. So we have we just now celebrated four years being married, um, and it was the first leg of the trip. So I decided that I wanted to do a little something special. Surprise with a little trip down to the Omni in Asheville. Stayed a couple of nights and it was phenomenal. Highly recommend. Ten out of ten. Well, I, well, hold on. Ten out of ten out of ten is like next. We we talked about that where the place we went today. It's like you can't give someone a ten out of ten or a five out of five. Oh, unless true. They, we did talk about that. Yeah. So we were talking kind of about how like this whole notion of like luxury and four and five star stays and what that does for expectations. Like what does that even mean though? Which by the well, way, yeah. which by the way, before we get into this, I got to tell about the wine that we're drinking. Oh, crap, but so, I really want to finish. I know, but, but, but hold that thought. So I think when we were at the Omni, we were I don't, even, I, mean, I don't even know if we got too far into the episode, but we told the Omni that it was our anniversary. They gave us a little three-quarter bottle thing of Josh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Shout out to all the Joshes out there that listen. We got a big following with dudes named Josh. Uh, but tonight, <laughs> I don't know. But tonight, no. ladies and gentlemen, we got a special bottle of wine uh, because we are living... <laughs> <laughs> just living it up in the Ozarks, man. Like, I, where are which, we? by what the way, we, we haven't even shouted out Ozark, the TV show, which we absolutely love. Okay, I feel like we're all over the place um, again. We're all over the place. <laughs> it's our first time it. recording, and I think we're... Uh, anyway, so the um, the bottle of wine we're drinking tonight is Stag's Leap, okay? Cabernet Sauvignon, Napa Valley. Um, first, so I, I was going to say vintage 1893, but that's not what we're drinking tonight. We're drinking a 2017. Ooh, that would be rough. And, um, and here's, a, here's a fun fact for you. There's two Stags Leap in Napa Valley. So if you ever go to Napa Valley um, and want to do a wine tasting, there's two Stags Leap. And the difference is, is where the comma is placed within the Stags. So we are drinking S-T-A-G-S apostrophe. 
versus S-T-A-G apostrophe S. I forget which one won the 1973 battle between the uh, California versus France, which is also another great uh, movie, I think, on Amazon, Bottle Shock, with the guy who played Severus Snape, rest in peace, can't remember his name, but then also Chris Pine, who was in Star Trek, so highly recommend. But that's what we're Passion. drinking tonight. And I feel like um, I was very excited when we got this because when we ordered it at the restaurant, so we're now back in the, the hotel, the Holiday Inn, oh my gosh, who sang that song? What you doing? It's not a Holiday uh, but, Inn. But it's not a Holiday Inn. It's Holiday Inn Express, okay? You know, get a it's little, not that either. But who, Chingy. So shout out to all my Chingy 2000s babies out there. No, 1990s babies out there. What you doing? Nothing chilling at the Holiday Inn. Um, this, when it came out, I'm, I'm pretty sure 99.99999% sure the waitress mistook the bottle of wine in which we ordered and then brought this bad boy out. We confirmed with her like, Hey, I think this might be the wrong one. She said it was the whole thing. I said, okay, as long as we don't pay this much, we're like, as long as it's this price that we thought we were ordering, <laughs> so, we'll take and it. Then, she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, all right, that's definitely like. Well, and then we smiled at each other, and then we took it. And I'm just going to say this is a uh, well, we one confirmed of, like this three is times. this is one of the nicer bottles of wine that we've had in a long time, and it was one of those things. Again, if you enjoy wine, the the moment it hits your palate, you're just like yes and amen. Well, Thank I you feel very like much. we need some context as to why this was so refreshing because. Oh yeah, we are as we so mentioned. This is going to turn into our travel. In Ozark, Missouri. Is, welcome, to, welcome to Wine Stains Travel Edition. And okay, so the resort that we're staying at, well. Uh, I should clarify that the hotel we're staying at is kind of like a resort that a little bit makes you feel like you're in the Dominican, Dominican, like an islands, bro. In like a, it kind of reminds me of like Lake Gaston, North Carolina, where I went a couple times with my family growing up. Did we just kinda, equate the islands to like you just equated the islands? No, to like I'm last. saying like I haven't been able to figure out the vibe here. Like then a yeah, part of it reminds me of like Ozark, the TV show, obviously. But anyways. We went Marty to Bird. the little, like, it literally has, like, a pool and, like, a tiki bar and, like, it's just very confusing. So we went to the quote-unquote tiki bar and Connor Fire was nice. like, oh, it's sunset. Like, go get a good seat. Like, what do you want oh, to drink? And I was like, oh, I don't know, like, a beer, skinny margarita, something, something simple. Connor comes back <laughs> to the lounge chairs that I'm laying in with three bright red <laughs> rum runners with like <laughs> oh, no, no, no. fruit coming out of no, them. No, you didn't know it. You didn't know that they were rum runners at the time. So one I of, just saw bright red cocktails. Bright like, red. Don't want that. <laughs> don't so want it. what's really funny is there's a, there's a fantastic GIF or is it GIF? We still haven't settled GIF. that. GIF is peanut butter. Okay. I still think it, it, I think it's GIF. I call it GIF, but I do like, I do mess with the GIF peanut butter of Zach Galifianakis in a like, I, I don't even know what, like a honeycomb type wig thing, walking on the beach with like six or seven margaritas. So just, if you if you have Giphy out there, just type in like drinks and you'll see Zach Galifianakis. I, that's how I felt. Like, And when I ordered the Rum Runner, I thought, man, Caitlin is going to love this. This is going to be great. And it was just super funny because we get back to the thing. Number one, I'm seeing the guy make the drinks. And you're like, you know when you go to a place and you're like, this guy probably probably – would not be able to make it in any other bar except for where he's at right now. I was like, when I was like, are you, I, you want me to come back there and I can do it? Um, I mean, that's pretty harsh. And I, I, I couldn't tell you how to make a rum runner if I even tried. But anyway, we were, we were on vacation having a nice time. And I come back, yeah, three red Kool Aids. And Caitlin, like, looks at me with those eyes. I was oh, just man. Like, I, was, no, I sat like, down. I said, what? but I was, I was like, Caitlin, I got a rum runner. So she goes, isn't that all sugar? And I tasted it. And I promise it literally tasted like I was drinking, like, the Kool-Aid back from Which the granted, day. like nothing wrong with a sugary cocktail when no, you are well, in like the Dominican or on vacation. Or that's shout out really Mama want. Juana. Shout out Mama Juana. I don't even know what Mama Juana is, but I know we had some on our uh, yeah, honeymoon. honeymoon. You honeymoon, just let me rant. I, I felt like I was trying to fill dead void space just then. Well, I'm Because that wasn't, the, that wasn't the even listeners. a funny part. I just was letting him unravel. But yeah. anyways... But anyway, we'll we're, move yeah. on from drinks and all the things. But so but, here But we are. funny moment because he get, not only did he give me two rum runners... <laughs> which I thought, man, this is going to knock Caitlin's socks off. She's going to be like, you order the best drinks. I didn't even, I, I drank one out of like, I didn't want to waste the $10 that it's, I freaking spent on the one cocktail. But then he gave me the excess and the bartender was so like happy. He was like, hey, here's the excess too. Like poured a third drink and I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. And I actually uh, have a video of that, of you coming down you do. from the patio no, you have, we, we, with we, big smiles on your face and I just was shaking my head of yeah. disapproval. Like, 
Well, granted, because we had had fun in Asheville, we'd had fun in Nashville. No, but at, no, and Asheville was, was before that. Like, no, no, that, oh my gosh, I the think, days running. Uh, together. Other female listeners can relate to just like you get a couple days into a vacation or a trip and out of your routine, and it's that time of the month, and your whole body just feels. What, out what of do you sorts. mean? What do you mean by that time of the month? It's don't concern yourself. <laughs> Anyways. And you just feel like very out of sorts. And so I was just like, I just need like a refreshing little thing for dinner. And I was like, I don't need three rum runners. Here's a rum runner. I feel like we've harped on that. But what we did kind of want to talk about is how. But what were you saying? Yeah, before all that. Uh, at the Omni? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were talking about how like the notion of when you do book a nicer place or you go to a nicer restaurant, like luxury often carries with it higher expectations, which also relates to business in a lot of ways because when you charge a premium or a higher ticket price on something, then client expectations are higher. So there's more pressure to deliver. And it was just interesting to us when we have stayed, you know, knowing that we're kind of on an extended road trip, obviously everything can't be five star and luxury and great speak for yourself money and things are expensive (laughs) i will say i've been ruined i have been ruined yeah we enjoy nice accommodations but obviously like that comes at a cost and a price which isn't necessarily always fun to pay but when you do decide oh you know what we're going to treat ourselves we're going to pay a little bit more for this that means when you go to dinner and (laughs) you don't get free bread or you don't get free anything and everything is more expensive and the waiter takes 30 minutes to come take your order or whatever like the tension Mm. that you kind of start to feel gets higher Mm. because there's a little bit more if you're used to it you know what i mean like if you're used to like that kind of i think if you're not used to it because you're even you're even more like this we're treating ourselves this is nice we want to enjoy a nice experience where where did we first was it at Asheville that we first yeah it was at Asheville. we we, we, we were talking like the the omni was awesome but it was just like Asheville's an experience it's a surprisingly expensive city, I think. Like we're probably thinking like East Coast, Mountain but, but Town. But where, but where do we have a good experience that we were like, man, this is this is great. Um, I mean, we did really like the dinner at the Omni. Yeah, you were just mad because you didn't get free bread, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Maybe that's <laughs> no, you know what? Okay, you know what? That's what I was looking for because because this this whole conversation has been ongoing for the past couple of days, and I was trying to think of the the, the point. Or, or like where it started, and it was because I did not get free bread at the Omni. And well, and, and we you know, asked and, okay. The and by the way, but but hold on. You know what I feel like right now? So I think uh, Nate Bergazzi, who we obviously love his comedy, comedian. he uh, he has a joke about this where he goes to um, like one of his like like one of his most popular jokes is he goes to like a snake, like uh like uh, what's a cold blooded thing like uh an al- what's an alligator or a snake rept- a reptile museum or whatever. Uh, which actually, now I think about it, when I was in like fifth grade, they brought a they brought a you know what I'm not I'm not going to say the name because you actually know who I'm talking about, which I can't say. So this is an anonymous podcast, okay? What are you saying right now? So, anyways, I was talking about the uh, the Omni, okay? Let's get to it. And and the Omni and what? I forgot. <laughs> I started thinking about the reptile. Oh, so Nate Bargatze. So, wow, you can tell that we've been on the road for a long time. Um, but he has a joke. He, he goes to this, like, reptile museum, and, like, he, uh, like, an alligator gets loose, and, like, this lady, like, left a review, and after his, like, special, he talks about the review, and, like, all the, like, like everybody went to check out the review, and it got all these likes, and it's, so, like, his joke, and, man, this is really dragging on for a long time. Um, his joke is, like, you better be, you better be like that. She thought that she was a great reviewer. Like, man, like people are like loving my views when it just came, like he talked about in a special. So people were like looking it up. She and basically the joke is like, you better watch it. Applebee's because I'll bring you down. Like, I kind of feel like that right now. It's like, you got, we have like, we got a couple listeners on the, on the podcast. Yeah, we're we going to, we're going to bring you down. No, but I'm just joking. But it was it, it, nothing against the Omni, of course. I mean, it was great. For the, they, they were busy, whatever, like, you know, it's COVID still. So precautions and this and that. But I did get to thinking, man, like we're at this like nice place. I'm starving. Where's the bread? We asked him for bread and it's like, we don't do bread. And I'm like, well, how no, do you not he said, do bread? Yeah, we don't do bread, but I could maybe scrounge some biscuits from the back of the kitchen. And we're like, oh, okay. Yeah, like he was like, yeah, they stopped paying. Yeah. They stopped providing bread because they want you to pay for everything. He did say that. And then yeah. when you're at somewhere that like has literally like 40, $45 entrees, you're just like, no, it's not what I want to hear. You yeah, know what like, I mean? It's not why, what I want to hear. Yeah, don't, like, but, well, don't well, scrounge well, a biscuit from Yeah, the anytime, anytime you hear a waiter say, I'll scrounge something up for you. You're like, y'all doing that bad? Is it, is it, is COVID getting you that hard? But I yeah. will credit them too, because when we came back to our hotel room, 
they that's did the, that's for the joshua yeah a box of chocolates and a little like half bottle life of is josh, like a box of chocolates you never know got spilled. life is like a box of chocolates you never know which one you're gonna and now get i feel like Hold we've on. admitted guilt so if you do have incidentals on your credit card well, well now yeah now they're gonna be like well now, now, <laughs> now we're never we're gonna be screwed. able to we're never gonna be able to stay, stay a nominee again but i i just did the forrest gump quote uh life is like a box of chocolates you never know which one you get that's okay. on our landing page for the podcast it may or may not be, but I also saw a guy in the elevator today who was wearing. <laughs> uh, no, that was with you just now. Actually, it wasn't. But it wasn't before that. I said, "Oh, where are you from?" They said, "We're from Nebraska." I said, "Oh, go Cornhuskers," and I go, "Oh, like Forrest Gump." <laughs> and then they go, uh, "I said the f- for," and then they walked out of the elevator, and I said, "Okay, let's go Forrest Gump." And she goes, "You do you not just remember Is that Forrest Gump from here? I thought it was Georgia or Florida. Or no, something. but he he plays football. Us. I think for Nebraska. Okay. At any rate, what are we talking about tonight? Because I feel like we're just I feel like we forgot how to podcast, but now we're back in it, and we just threw the Omni under the bus. But it, when it which it was a, an amazing, beautiful place, and I actually wish I could go back. Shout out Asheville North. Kakalaki. Omni, if you're listening, we love you and we can't wait to see you next time on the Wine Stains podcast. <laughs> and sorry about the hotel room with wine stains. Hashtag marked territory. Kaylin, what are we talking about tonight? Um, like I mentioned, we wanted to talk a little bit about expectations and how that relates to business yes. and client experience. Yeah, and talk about client experience, Kate. Um, I mean, I will say for me Hold on. We'll be we'll be right back after this quick commercial break commercial break is over there are no ads <laughs> <laughs> people are like oh there's they They're got like, ads already that sucks no, we, no we, it's like it's like all the people in Asheville that listen to us are like no nah, we, we listen to this podcast because they haven't yeah. put ads on it so I think client experience is one of those things if I had a dollar for every time I said something Kaylin goes yeah so yeah pretty much mm. it's really important is because you get to a place where like success is important you want more 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 in your in your business and as that starts coming it's of course difficult to then also manage and maintain a certain level of client experience but you also but you also thrive at the beginning so like when you're a new entrepreneur like the thing that sets you apart or that you think you're like man i'm gonna deliver the most amazing client experience i'm gonna yeah it's like a differentiator like i'm near one i'm gonna promise this 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 and this and it's gonna be great i'm gonna have these deliverables but then once you start getting some success number one not only is it difficult to maintain that pace of experience or onboarding but then the clients that you onboarded when you first started now have this level of expectation that if you don't meet it could be a problem yeah, that is that's very true. And I've largely originally set up Copy and Cork to be very project based. And then it was like, what if my best clients then want to stick around and they want more work done? And you've kind of begun because you didn't out. know that, because you didn't know that you would have more like uh, as big a retainer base. Well, you just hear so much the importance of like booking yourself out and like make sure that you're it, hustle 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 yeah, till you yeah, die, yeah. die 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 just the allure of like booking yourself as far out into the future as you can versus you sometimes then start entering a place where some of the work that you're doing is unaligned with unaligned and subpar and you know what and so i know that you're on something like matthew mcconaughey unaligned subpar. unaligned subpar green mile hash, hash, hashtag yeah bring the bongos baby we do this okay, little bit of that university of texas <laughs> ambassador all right it's all right all right all right so anyway what i'm saying is it becomes subpar and I think a lot of that is because of this scarcity mindset that a lot yeah. of entrepreneurs enter into when they start a business of, oh man, I'm going to fail if I don't onboard this person. Yeah. Or just like, I think there's a level of expectation where you feel like you have to, but I've started realizing like it's, you're doing more of a disservice to say yes to a client if you can't actually meet the level of expectation that they have for you versus saying no, but you Ooh, say no. Hold on, hold on. I got another thing. What? Hashtag Weinstein's wisdom. <laughs> Shout out. God. That was really good. No, but let, but let's let's talk about that for a second because again, this whole mindset of and and, and let's be honest, like business business equals mindset, mindset equals business in terms of. I, I you could even say mindset equals success, right? And success equals mindset. If you don't have the right mindset, you're Positive not going to be mindset, successful. A good mindset, yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll uh, we'll workshop that saying, but yeah, <laughs> but we'll work on that. one. I thought I had something. You know, when something sounds like really clever in your head, and then you out yeah. like you speak it out loud, and then people are looking at you like, "What'd you say?" You're like, "Nothing." I <laughs> something in my throat. You say um, a lot of really great things, but yeah. you do say a lot of things that 
that are like what category would that fall under it's like a very quick thing that comes to his mind mm. and he's excited about it yeah i got super excited and about he it. says it out loud and you know what i saw he i saw says it's yeah. so profound and it's literally like stoplights are red <laughs> actually <laughs> like, that but that's what? we talked about that before yeah I, I see things in a pinterest board sometimes like a cool instagram caption post thing whatever but again it comes back to um this uh, the whole the scarcity mindset but i think it, it, it's fear it's insecurity you're you're in business you're the one whose name is on the door you're the one that is solely responsible for revenue and there's this thing where if i don't onboard this client even though and, and even for more matured and seasoned business owners it's like i know that this client is going to be a handful and not not aligned with my values or my ideal client, but I feel like I still need to take them on because I don't know where the next client is going to come through. And what that does is it not, not only dilutes your service offering, it dilutes your entire customer experience, not just your new customer experience, but your, but your existing client experience. Because now you're worried about the person who's got that attitude and that you know, total just non-fit thing you're trying to please and this and that. And meanwhile, the people that have been with you for a long time are su- not suffering, not the right word, but because you know, because they're, they're not also, feeling like a priority. They're, they're not feeling like a priority. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you what. I mean, I've I've had that happen again, like being in my my business where people don't feel like a priority. It's like no, it's like no. I know I love you, but I I and I want to take care of you. But I got this opportunity over here, and so I think the quicker you get to the point. And again, you're going to hear not only us say it, but a million people say it. It's like the, the quicker you get to a point where you say you, where you can say no to people and be confident in that. But but I, I still am not even to that point where it's like, I want to say no. I know it should be a no, but look at what that could generate kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but that comes, again, through maturity and just years of experience where it's like, you know what, I, I, could, I could, but it's just not. But again, it comes back into even what we talk about, like the lifestyle that you want to build. Yeah, which you know? I think is why it's so important to, and we talk about this in one of our Copy Uncorked courses called Vine to Voice. That shout is, out Vine to Voice, shout out Copy Uncorked. But it's we t- we shout talk out a actually. Lot about, hold on, I'm sorry, that was unpaid promotion. I'm gonna need you to go through <laughs> our. I'm gonna need you to go through our uh, our, no, it was our just account manager because we yeah. talk a lot about core values as a business owner and the importance of that, not only for things like your brand voice, your brand messaging, your copy, but in terms of how you make decisions as a business owner. Because if you know, for example, that your core values are freedom, autonomy, like independence, service, like that's a big one for me. And sometimes you find your core values by figuring out what like kind of gets you in a tizzy or what you hate. And for me, I hate disappointing people. So I know that client experience is huge for me. So when I get to a place in my business where I feel like I'm not delivering at the level that people expect of me, that's a disconnect that like signals to me that I'm out of it. I'm out of alignment and I need to do something to fix that. And that often sometimes looks like slowing down, but we think on the front end that we're disappointing people when we do that because they want to hear yes. But like, it's a biblical principle, you know, like let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. And I'm trying to honor that a little bit more in terms of like, if I'm saying yes to someone, they're expecting the full yes, not the, yeah, I said yes, but I have all these other things going on. So like, you're kind of a priority, but like, not really, but like, kind of, it's like, no, if I'm giving someone a yes, it's a yes. And if I'm giving someone a no, it's a no, because it not only protects me, but it also serves them because it's enabling them to go find someone who can give them a full yes. So what, what do you think about, which by the way, I wish I had an applause. I think I do have an applause button actually. <laughs> Hold on. So that was really freaking good uh, by old Caitlin Parker. And um, here we go. So we're going to do this. Applause. <laughs> Sorry if that just blew your eardrums out because it just <laughs> did mine. Holy crap. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was right. So, Kayla, what, what do you think about niches? So, like, when you're talking about, like, mm-hmm. let your yes be yes, what? <laughs> niches. <laughs> so, but I just I just feel like niches get stitches, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, I, but I feel like I, would think that I was such, like, a radio host just then. Um, shout out Conan O'Brien. I prefer Hold on. niche. <laughs> oh, is it niches? <laughs> niches? That- <laughs> Actually, now that I say niches out loud. <laughs> Okay, we're going to put up a poll. Is it niches or niches? That's is like it niches? Niches are in the riches, I think I've heard some people say. But it's definitely, for me, I say but, but, niche. But, okay, so you say niche. Yeah, it's a niche. Uh, 
I think I say What's I, your niche? I I think I think Some niche, people say niche. I think niches is the plural of niche, just like geese are the plural of goose. You don't but say look at all these gooses. Niches? And then the whole point of a niche is that it wouldn't be plural cuz it's, mm, it's <laughs> it sounds a little bit like niece to me. So, uh <laughs> look at all those chickens. Um so what I was going to say, I have a couple things. Number 1, and let's see, don't make me forget or don't let me forget this. Which, by the way, it's, it's also a pet peeve of mine that that you do, or maybe that everybody does, where it's like you'll like be somewhere and you'll like you'll look at me in like my own little dumb world, and you'll say, "Hey, don't let me forget to like call my this person like at five p.m." I'm like, "Why don't you just not forget yourself? You know, like don't let me forget. Like don't let me forget where I am right now." Why did you clarify with it with my little dumb self? Like my like cause like in my own world. Like I'll be in my own world just thinking about oh, I wonder what the, how the Red Sox did today, or like like thinking to myself like in the checkout line, and you'll be like, "Hey, don't let me forget to to drop this off at UPS tomorrow before." Th- 3 30 p.m i just like you can't really like, that's not my responsibility uh but man that brings me on two things <laughs> number <laughs> number number one is what do you think about niches slash niches i don't know if those are two different things and then also yelp reviews because i left my first no not even a yelp review a trip advisor <laughs> review to help my homegirl olivia out at the jb hooks that we went to tonight shout out that's that's where we went tonight so jb yeah, hooks well, if you ever like the ozark so but start on or speaking of what i, I want i want to talk to you about okay i'll talk about niches, niches first yeah. i'll say i actually did for my other the other olivia that we hung out with olivia Nashville, my good friend olivia, olivia is take that i work with shout out john mayer um shout out gravity i was telling her about yelp and how on this trip Hold on. okay I, okay did you okay you just sounded like you ever you know, you like you were telling her about Yelp, like it was like the no, new thing. No, she I, because you know how every time you Google like a restaurant or something or a hotel, and we've been very unplanned. So like every five seconds, we're literally uh, googling that's, a hotel I remember that. I remember or that a restaurant, yep. and I was like, yep. oh, every time I want to click on a photo or review, it takes me to Yelp, but I have to download the app. She's like, why don't you download the app? I was like, I don't because yeah, that's very true. I don't actually, usually use it, but then I was like, well, we're going to be using it for the next couple of weeks. So I also asked. I also I asked her husband. App. And uh, their their friend's husband, if they did Instagram, remember when I said that I, there was something I said, Did y'all do Instagram? You also, who were you talking to today? Or uh, Maddie? Okay, another girl that I work with, a good friend. Shout out, you Maddie. were explaining to her parents at brunch how Netflix <laughs> works. <laughs> like one of the most embarrassing moments. Like he's like, so yeah, there's like Netflix, you know, where you can like download and watch anything you want, and like you pretty much just. And I was like, yeah, I yeah, I think they understand Netflix, and the whole table just started like cracking up. I was like, yeah, oh, we're gonna man. forget that that ever. You know happened. what? I, I forgot about that moment. Like, what happened to you in that moment? I just, <laughs> I misunderstood my audience. I think. And I just, I never assume, I never assume that people know what I'm talking about, number one. Like when I asked the guys if they did Instagram, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to assume that you're on Instagram. I know people that don't do Instagram. I know people that are Amazon or whatever that don't do Netflix. But I feel like at this point, though, everyone knows what Netflix is. Because then we talked about how I, I know people that had uh, or still recently had um the, the the DVDs delivered to their house. No, we're gonna skip past yeah, it. All right, we'll skip past it. Was, it. it was but it was a funny moment, moment man. And they were coming, like, they were like, yeah, dude, we we know what Netflix is. And I was like, all right, I will. Yeah, it was all time. It was really funny. But coming back to the topic of niche, niche, not niche. Niche sounds like niche in France. I have somewhat of shout out Paris. The notion. Oh, shout out the app. No, well, hold on. Shout out the app. Shout out the app. Notion. I use that on the regular. Um, if you're looking for a great for productivity like application, Notion. Yeah. I think so. it's free. It is free, actually. Yeah, it's great. I prefer ClickUp, but it's fine. We'll come back to that. Oh, we're gonna do we're gonna do ClickUp versus Notion. That's what we we should start That's doing. That's what we should interview Brooke Sager about. Well, we should start doing like um like like tech really versus excited. or like productivity versus like like ClickUp versus Notion yeah. or Love it. So I don't know. niche. I when I so what? So hi, Caitlin. Welcome to the Connor Parker Show. Yeah, pretty what much. What do you think about niches? Okay, I avoided a niche when I first rebranded, on somewhat of a level. So it was mainly like what I call modern brands and creative entrepreneurs. So basically, people who have a unique take on their interest. Wait, this, this was your first niche. Yeah, that's just what I describe. 
like our desired audience as is modern brands and creative entrepreneurs. Cause I was just like, to me, it doesn't matter if we're working with a boutique hotel or like a really I awesome only wedding shop at the photographer boutique. or a wine brand or a physical, I was just about to say a physical fitness coach. <laughs> That's what I used to do. <laughs> if you couldn't tell by my amazing a health, physique. A, a health coach, a fitness coach, yeah. a life coach, whatever. What would you call them? A physical fitness coach? Yeah. My mom's a PE teacher, so yep. I think that's that's why. No, that you do call them a physical brain. fitness coach. Just like you I like would. a fitness coach, a yeah. health coach. Anyways. So Talk about, yeah, sure. to me it didn't it didn't matter so much because it, like in the industry of copywriting and marketing, it's kind of like the process is the same. It doesn't matter so much what the industry is, but it does matter who the type of client is. So I have not necessarily niched in terms of industry or type of business, but more so in type of client. And I really like clients who are passionate, collaborative, involved. They're excited about what they do. They're really good at what they do. My dad worked for Bacardi for like a bajillion years. And he always said like, if you're going to be in sales, you want to work for number one. So as much as I love writing for and working with clients who are brand new in their field because they can be incredibly talented and like on the cusp of something it is also really fun to work with someone who has been great and like awesome at what they've done for a long time they have the product down solid because just like a designer can't give you a brand a copywriter can't give you a brand my friends jen and jeff at tonic site shop talk about Shout this out tonic all the site time. Shop. and shout out use the code <laughs> Copy on cork. Copy on cork for twenty percent off. Their so, sites are yeah. beautiful, but they, they are not. They are not sponsoring this podcast. By no, the way. they yeah. talk about it all the time, and it's so true. And so it's part of why, as a copywriter, I a lot of times feel like an assembler. Like I love working with clients who are so excited about what they do. I can tell they deliver an amazing service to their people or a, an amazing product, and it's like I'm putting the wrapping paper and the bow on it, and I'm like writing all the words that make people have that you know light bulb moment for them so but but so but uh, but so uh, again how how client experience ties into niche niches are you yeah. are you saying that like like in your work or, or your i mean i guess it, it's for any industry I, I guess you could like does your onboarding your client experience have to 100 percent line up with your niche yeah, that's true. I, mean, I think I, I think I think yours is very different because copywriting. I mean, it's not like you're. It has so much like research involved. Yes. Anyways, yeah. but yeah, I mean, a little bit. It's like you're creating more work for yourself if you're completely unfamiliar with an industry versus if like, I I like working with clients even in stuff like interior design or home or real estate because like we've done some of those things. You know what I mean? So when mm. I'm writing for someone, I'm like not only hearing what they're saying, but I'm able to bring some level of personal experience to it versus when you're like solely relying on research to be able to, you know, figure something out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that your niche should align with your process. And if you feel like your process doesn't best serve a particular niche, then that's one of those instances where you would say no. Well, and that that comes back to your marketing too. Like in terms of like, if you're going to market yourself as like you're working, well, I don't know if we can say like, like you're working in a very specific niche right now and how they're marketing themselves is very on, uh, very, very specific in terms of who they want to work with, the, the type of client that they're attracting. And I guess that bottom line is you better deliver on what you're promising because a lot of the times it comes back to you have the, the blood in the water type thing where it's like, I know I just want these clients. I'm going to do this and do that. But guess what? If the expectation is set, the expectation has to be met. Oh, oh, hold on. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to get my handkerchief out. If the expectation is set, the expectation has to be met because so many people, and I mean, and specifically entrepreneurs, business owners, when you're trying to get that sale, you know, you want, you you people end up promising the world, Right and deliver not the world well, I, I, I was hoping I'd have people to like deliver the world but deliver I don't even know what's smaller than the world moon rocks who knows but if the expectation is set I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna keep repeating that that sounds amazing it's probably already been used but um, but <laughs> but but the reason I say is we like when we drive up to a nice uh, hotel right we know that there's an expectation there and more oftentimes than not, they're going to meet it. Okay, if we go to a nice restaurant, the expectation is set. More oftentimes, they're going to meet it. If not, then you have a bad experience, and you leave a bad TripAdvisor review or Yelp review, which, by the way, like Olivia said, just download the app, okay? Just 
Yeah, I think that actually aligns better with what I was trying to say about sales and like clients being number one in their field or whatever. And it's more of like, I love writing copy for people where I know that the expectation that we're setting is going to be met. Like that makes me so excited because it gives me so much freedom to make them sound incredible and write stuff because there's so much truth to it. Like Mm. it's like the integrity (laughs) in my industry. Speak your truth. Live live your truth. Pretty much. We don't have to talk about that catchphrase. Um, no, but that's, that's really good, Caitlin. Um, but speaking of, I'm just looking at a little bit of things that we wrote down here because we're, we're, we're going legit. We're, we're taking random notes on our phone throughout the day. Um, Airbnb, Nashville, talk about it. What do you, what do you want to talk about? Oh gosh. Okay. Talk so there about are expectation. Some, well, it's not necessarily that that didn't meet an expectation because it actually kind of like surpassed the expectation Which really, by, okay, because but, the location but, okay. was so good. Again, Nashville, we, we talked about it a little bit. I, we love Nashville. We were there in March, the end of March. Ended up getting a little bit of the COVID, which was not fun. Wouldn't not recommend. Fun. Zero out of five stars COVID, okay? Do yeah, not like recommend we went it. back to the scene of the crime. Which, it was almost like a redemption swan song, okay? Yeah. It, it just happened to work out on our trip, going through, meeting up with some really great friends, which, by the way, if you're listening to this, five, 10 out of t- 15 out of 10 stars, the friend group that we were with. Um, but we stayed at... And oh no, no! But but no, okay, the whole Nashville, forty thousand pounds of fireworks. I think it was. Yeah. One of the largest, if not the largest. I kept telling people it was the largest in the country. I don't know. I haven't really. I haven't fact checked myself outside of like a Nashville website where it's like, yeah, come down. We got the largest thing. It's like we got the largest chicken in the United States. Whatever it is, um, but like three hundred fifty thousand people lining the streets of Broadway. Brad Paisley, uh, put on a free concert. I just love it. It was amazing. It was awesome. And but the place Airbnb that we booked Nashville. was one block away. It was a huge loft apartment. So literally we we actually probably didn't But, but tell them tell them why you're now banned from booking anything related yeah, to our travel. Yeah, because when I first booked it, it was before we had left town for this trip and I felt before like, Asheville because people need to know on this trip we are kind of flying by the seat yeah, of our pants yeah we're very much bit. flying by the seat of our pants but Connor had at least booked Asheville and we decided like we want to kind of know where we're going at least two stops at a time so Connor booked Asheville I was tasked with booking Nashville and I was like cool got it been there before I can do this it was on this. our Slack channel yeah and I was like alright <laughs> yeah. we're gonna no we no. don't have Slack channel <laughs> we don't have a Slack channel Slack and, is like your, okay anyways yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I had been there since no, we <laughs> knew we were gonna be been wearing there. slack. I, I, I just took, I just took Caitlin. I just took Caitlin to work mode, and she I feel like just felt like the Locked urge to like check slack. I need to check slack right now. I did. <laughs> I, got, I'm like, I just got so hot. Caitlin just Caitlin just responded to a slack message she got an hour ago. Have I I've been there since. Okay, we're not. Anyways. No, yeah. I feel like I, I feel like, like oh, slack. Yeah. I feel like slack world would be like an episode like the Black Mirror. Anyways, anyways. Yep, yeah, keep, we'll yep. come back to that, maybe. Mm-hmm. So I knew that we were going to be there through, like, July 4th. So I was like, oh, yeah. And I just ended up booking Saturday through Sunday. So I booked July 3rd. one night, July yeah. 3rd and July 4th. Because in my mind, I was just like, yeah, through the 4th. But I was supposed to book it through Monday morning, which would have been the 5th. So, of course, I book a non-refundable place. And then I panic and I message. But no, but you find out that it's non-refundable in only one night when we're in Asheville. Yeah, and like I, well, celebrating way, our inter- I think, <laughs> or something. I don't remember when I yeah. found out, but I just like, it was one of those moments where just like your stomach drops and you're just like, I'm an idiot. And the problem was 90% of the places in Nashville were booked because- Fourth of July. Hashtag one July of the Fourth weekend. Biggest, yeah. And then secondly, of the 10% of places that happened to be left, we had Dodger with us. Oh, so yeah, it was like Dodge, 1% man. were available and also allowed pets. And so I was like, I'm so sorry. I only booked one night. I know it's non-refundable. To the Airbnb like, host. Yeah. What can we do? And she was just like, well, yeah, it's <laughs> non-refundable. So you can do nothing other than the fact that I do have these other places. And I was like, perfect. I'll take one of your other ones. So she sent me a link and I just very quickly looked at the link, looked at the price that was shown and was like, perfect. Let's do it. Booked it. Okay. But that's... And that's when, to me how it went, but yeah, When sure. it came through, it showed me like all these like extra charges, but I was a little bit confused because the total of the extra charges pretty much added up to exactly what I had paid for the first room. 
So I was like, maybe somehow like that's my refund. Again, I was just being very dumb and looking at it very quickly. No, not dumb. We we we, we were in a bind. Like yeah, July Fourth we weekend, it was there was really stressful. nothing I left. Worked, and yeah. I had other stuff going on, and I just was like, yeah, yeah, sure, it'll all work out. And long story short, I just ended up basically paying three times <laughs> what we planned to spend for two nights in Nashville. But oh, two, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah like any, it just I don't understand, honestly, like. I'm like trying to be careful because like yeah. Airbnb is awesome and shout out Airbnb. We <laughs> love it. And when did it get so expensive? Like when do you book a room that let's just pick an arbitrary price and say that the room is two hundred and fifty dollars a But night. again, this comes back into and client experience. Th- this comes yes. into client experience, expectation, what yes. you see on the internet so and what t- you see portrayed on the commercials and on so the website. So you websites. see two fifty and then you book the dates that you want and then it goes up to say three twenty and you're like mm, not what I wanted, but okay, still excited about this place. Yeah. So you book it at say three twenty, and then the cleaning fee is like seventy five dollars. Then the service fee is like sixty dollars, and then taxes are like thirty dollars. Mm. So before you know it, you actually booked an over five hundred dollar a ro- a night room mm. when you could have like booked a five star hotel or just maybe like not booked that expensive of accommodations like i just don't i just don't understand like how how did i'm just like airbnb how did we get here like (laughs) they went public girl i'm just like how did we get here like to me it only seems like it's now worth it if you're literally traveling with other couples or a group of friends and you can all split it but this plays into our next topic spontaneity versus making plans I just need to come down for that for a second. <laughs> yeah. I can see, I could just see Caitlin's blood pressure just Very going up to the room. It. I don't like um, fees. We, we don't like I'm fees, and fees. we also don't like being taken advantage of. And I think this particular I don't think that we were taken. I, I think, I think, I looking think. Looking back on I the weekend, we I'm like, the place was great. It was huge. The location was awesome. I just was not. And and I, I tell you what, have, if it wasn't for Sunday night, July Fourth, and like having all the. The, our like friends our over. friends back over, like it would have been to a bust. To be able to like utilize it. But I do think the place we were at, if it was two couples, like that would have been prime time. But yeah, you could I have didn't, split it and it would have been worth it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like you just have to split an Airbnb with other people but, and then it makes sense. But again, it comes back to spontaneity versus making plans. Okay, yeah, it's true. So the people, the friends that we hung out with in Nashville, um, we were very graciously invited to join reservations that they had made because we were kind of like the last minute addition. Which, man, shout out to the friends that just just go no, there. Yeah, just, they were great. They they booked amazing oh, places, and it was so nice to not have to think about it for two days or whatever. And A then, treat. of course, as soon as we leave there, we're like, so, what are we doing for lunch? What are we doing for breakfast? Where are we staying tonight? Mm. And, like, we don't like making plans because we kind of end up, changing how we feel or what we want to do like whenever we do book plans for ourselves we kind of tend to be like that's not what we feel like doing but it does create a lot of extra stress sometimes too like we'll get in a tiff in the car or we'll get frustrated who gets in a tiff in the car because we get frustrated with each other i've never gotten a tiff in my life you look it up no you look it up like i'm tired i don't feel like it like and then are we are we we changing gears into marriage (laughs) maybe this is this is what happens when you've been traveling for a long time, or I mean, not even a long time, for a couple, for a, I guess eight days or a week now. Hey, raw, and stuff comes raw, out. unfiltered conversation. But, but it, I think it all comes back to again, or not even again, but for the first time, it's like sometimes stuff just doesn't work out the way that you expected it to. And you got to go with the flow, yeah, baby. Yeah, very true. I just, I, that's I was, really I, the moral of the story I was, here. Yeah, well, that's, that's really the, 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 like the, yeah, the story. About, sometimes. Oh, oh no. You oh, know what? Here we go. We're here in those Hold on, wait, hold on. This just in, Caitlin has an epiphany. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I, I, I love it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Shout out to those moments when you're married for, well, we're like four years in, you know, been together for a little bit longer than that. Like those moments of joy where it's like you can feel genuine laughter, you know, like you, like there's nothing more, there, there's nothing, um, I mean, I should say nothing, but. There's there's not many feelings that I feel in terms of like satisfaction or like yes than like when I make Caitlin like genuinely belly laugh or like like cackle or snort or snort like shout out to those little moments <laughs> and guess what ladies and gentlemen you know when those moments are for you and so that but you, yeah anyways you yeah. know what I'm you know what yes. I'm saying no, I like agree. those like those little things like we're, like when we're like when we were uh, driving to uh, when we were driving through the Ozarks we haven't even freaking 
talked about them. We're the freaking Ozarks, man. Like, we love Ozark show. There's literally a bar called Marty Burns, okay? Which is and, and Caitlin, like, you were getting me weak, like, driving through the little strip. It's just those little moments, because man. Because you know that, why? Hold on. It's, just, it's, it's those little moments that you just hang on to, and life is stressful. Things don't go as planned, and you're just like, man... Thank you, Lord Jesus, for these blessings. Oh, yes. This ties in perfectly because when you are spontaneous, you often don't have time to form expectations. So when you get somewhere, you're excited because you didn't know what to expect. Like literally you booked the whole Asheville thing and the Biltmore. And like my dad called me on the way and was like so excited we were going to the Biltmore and was so cute and telling me all about it. And I still just never took the time to even like Google it or look it up. Had never even seen a photo online. Oh yeah, Baltimore. okay, but that that's so <laughs> when we walked up. That's I a, was that's like, another thing. Whoa. Caitlin, Caitlin, literally, I, 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 I we were walking up and she's like, I don't even know what I'm going. I'm like, you are you? I knew nothing. I literally, I, it, it, I, I don't even know how. To, like the the closest thing that I can like related to is like everyone knows like uh, Cinderella's castle at Disney World it's obviously like in the Disney World thing it'd be like if I, if you were taking like if you were walking up and like oh, I don't even know what Disney is and it's like like I literally just yeah, I, felt, I don't know how I, that happened I feel like, like I had like a stroke like going into the thing I'm like, like right before we walked down to the entrance I'm like what? you never seen the Biltmore like what are you talking about yeah I don't know but I was kind of glad that yeah. I didn't because that was like one of my favorite days of the trip so far because we just walked up. I was like, this place is beautiful. Kayla was like, oh, is, is that it? I was like, so, nah, uh I was like, this is amazing. Hmm. I just. I, I Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought it was great versus, and same thing here, coming to the Ozarks, my only, like, concept of the Ozarks was literally from the TV L show. Literally Ozark. the Ozark, yeah. And so when we pulled up and there was, like, you got your first glimpse of just how big the lake is and then we went across a dam and then we pulled right into the but cute little I think it's like more of a river. downtown strip and like you know when you're just like happy and excited and you can't stop laughing because you're just can't like stop, won't stop. you couldn't you couldn't have even like <laughs> fathomed what it's all like and yeah you're just seeing all this shout stuff out in front if of you, you can make it here you can make it the anywhere little stores and stuff it was just hilarious it was so. great I love that about spontaneity because sometimes the more that I research, the, the more the, that I build up expectation and the more I get yeah. disappointed. Versus well, oh my gosh, say, man. Let's it, go. Isn't it amazing how our podcast just ties together? <laughs> like, I think it's, it's, I think it's, it, there's a great song in this podcast. Um, but yes, I feel like the, like some of the best stories are obviously in spontaneity. Like last night, you know, I'm just going to share for the people that, cause they need to know. Okay. Last night, it's about 9 o'clock. Oh, you mean Caitlin made a bad plan again? <laughs> <laughs> she picked a bad place again? Caitlin, it's 9 o'clock. And Caitlin uh, is... Uh, Granted, picks the only restaurant that has a kitchen open okay, at 10 okay, p.m. So, okay, so, okay. And that's, and, and that's, okay, hold on. That's your get-out-of-jail-free card, which, by the way, Caitlin and I joke. So, obviously, we're in Virginia Beach, which is, you know, beaches and whatever. And it's like we find ourselves not necessarily living life to the maximum, like the beach life for the with the the i don't even know what As you call we, it. yeah and we're the, the narrow life like, whatever like being outside like on the beach like on the boat the boat life and it's funny like we it, it took us getting out to the ozarks to like spend an entire day by the pool it's like what we're like it's like who would have thought the most summary thing that we could have done that we've done this season is laying out by the pool yeah, in which the was ozarks obviously kind of in, one of the whole points of this trip was getting in missouri but mixing it, it up but yeah mixing it up but anyway last night it's like nine o'clock at night and we can and i are hungry not, not even hungry we're just one like we feel like we, dinner anytime we, we dinner. anytime we go somewhere i feel like we just have this like expectation but we, we gotta like go hard like see the city like go to every single spot that we yeah, can I, mean, I wouldn't say go hard but no, no, but no, like no, not, you can't well, just well, like order room yeah service. no no you go, have to like go to the restaurants in the town that yeah go go in. hard meaning i don't just want to eat at the restaurant in the hotel i want to go yeah. see like the local flavor whatever and so caitlin puts in the Right. Like, oh we're gonna go here it's gonna be great and like literally we it, it's the literal opposite direction of the way that we came which is where all the action was and it's like i'm driving and like five minutes in i see it's like another 15 minutes which by the way if it's 9 30 at night if you, and you drove seven hours to get there it's more like eight eight hours to get there 15 minutes is like a freaking lifetime so anyway I'm like, okay, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be whatever. We 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 drive in, and when I tell you, like, imagine like a dive bar on a lake with a private 21 plus no, pool. But 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 which is not even a private, just with a with a pool that you can only go to if you're 21 and up. I'll put it this way: the parking spot that I was gonna go into, Caitlin goes, hey, 
There's throw up right there. <laughs> Don't park Let's there. Let's not park there. That's the kind of spot that we were at. And so we opted for the chicken Caesar salad when we sat down. And um, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. It was like a can of chicken, two cans of chicken dumped on a salad. Boiled, microwaved, and Boiled, microwaved, and covered in uh, God knows what. I've n- I don't think I've ever not eaten oh, like, so, more than yeah. one bite of any yep. dish that I've ever been served in my life. And I took one bite and was just like, I'm not eating that. And uh, so It was like dog food. Yeah, but it's literally in those moments that you when you realize like, Hey, we're being spontaneous and there's a lot of benefits that come from being spontaneous. Like we talked about, and I forget which episode, the whole cost and payoff thing. It's like, there's a huge payoff to sometimes being spontaneous, but it also comes with a cost. So you just have to look at yourselves and like wine stains, just kind of like laugh and be like, well, this sucked. And Connor kept saying on the way home, like, Best meal we ever had. No, no, best be- meal be- we ever had. Well, I was being no, optimistic. Best, meal we never be- had. best, I said best meal we never had because yeah, we didn't because well, it. you were also you know you got a lot going on with the copy house and and getting that launched by July thirteenth. Shout out, what can I say that I don't even know what you you posted yeah, about coming. it. So it's, it's coming, coming July thirteenth, uh, whether you want to or not. But again, and again, I will say this again. How many times can I say again? How this ties in perfectly. Horrible, horrible, horrible product. But the waitress that we had was great. 15 out of 10 gave her more than 20. Uh, well, I, yeah, gave her a nice tip. Didn't even eat, didn't even eat the, the, the salads that we have, but the service was that good. So here's the other thing. Here's a question I'll pose and we'll kind of round out the podcast here. Can you have a horrible product, but great service slash marketing and still be successful? I think you can. And I think that's unfortunate I think that your product matters at the end of the day. Results matter. And this is what fires me up about, like, even in my industry, he who markets the best wins. It's like, you, it's like, yeah, no, we're not like advocating it's like, for it's that. Like, we're just stressing the importance. Of yeah, no, that's important. what I'm saying. It's like, no, I have a better product than you. But I'm telling you, at the end of the day, if people, and, and, and what it comes down to is people feeling cared for and heard that in the moment that I need you the most, you're there. So last night, horrible food. Horrible service at so horrible service at the outset too. It was one of those things where you walk into the the lobby of the restaurant or whatever, and people are walking by, don't see you for five minutes, and all of a sudden you go, "Hey there, hey, we're here too outside," and then they go, "Yeah, whatever." And then it's like then then like the person comes out, like the girl last night, and she goes, "It just totally transformed the night." Okay, that stuff is very very important. And and we can't over. I, I I'm just. I literally just had a flashback to the mid conversation to the canned chicken that was just sprawled out yes. on my side. And I lost my train of thought. But hopefully, what I said before that makes sense. So yeah, because it, but yes. it's. I think you know we're learning and realizing we kind of did this trip in the first place to just mix things up. We were feeling like we were in a rut. We knew that we were entering it with a lot of spontane- spontaneity, not much of a plan. And so because of that, we've kind of had to eat the moments where you're like, well, that didn't work out well, or crap, we spent more than we wanted to, or what are we doing? Because you just have to chalk it up to it's all part of the adventure and you have to find the joy in it. You have to find the learning moment in it. You just have to kind of move on from it because... Otherwise, you'll just continue to stress yourself out and be miserable. So I feel like that's what we've learned so far on <laughs> yeah. this trip. So, so that's what we learned so far. And the old, uh, uh, well, what's funny, I, so I almost said the, the wine stains pod, but really what it is is the adventures of CP and KV, which for hashtag all, when we were dating. all the OGs out there that have been follow all the day ones out there, um, We've been our friends from the beginning. Which is funny because when we, um, I don't know if we were dating, or we were, I think we were married, uh, but for one of the, so I talk about Etsy a lot. So I, I went on Etsy and I got this, uh, when I say I talk about Etsy a lot, I talk about it once, but apparently it was, I, I thought my Etsy thing was one of the funniest things I ever said. Like in my life, like this guy learned about Etsy. We talked about that in Nashville with friends because the um, five love languages came up. We all had a good laugh about personal touch. Oh, man. Dude, it, well, man, we should. Oh, so the, that personal touch thing was weak. That was funny. And for those of y'all that are new that have stayed around to the end here. Very happy. Was that, were you going to express a moment of gratitude? I'm very thankful because it's like, you know, okay, and this is what I wanted to, wanted to talk about. At the beginning of the podcast, before I spilt my wine a couple of days ago, and then now we're just picking it up here, where we, we, we went live, and it's a very vulnerable thing when you go live with a po- like 
any any sort of um I, what would you call this like any sort of uh platform or like when you're putting no, your just, voice yeah, out there into the public you're creating and putting crea- out there anything for that you're creating to consume basically yes. anything that you create that you make publicly available is very very uh it's very very vulnerable feeling and the feedback that we've gotten and I haven't even expressed this to you, Kate, because I kind of like like you like you uh, you uh, you've gotten all the messages. Shout out to none of Connor's friends coming out here and saying, "Well, no, I've had a couple, but anyway, it's it's one of those things where it's like, man, like thank you so much, like for your encouraging words, because it's very, it's nerve wracking. It, it's that it's that whole kind of thing. But you and yeah. I have gotten well, to that point, or me me to that point where it's like, well, we're very passionate about what we do, and. um I don't know. I'm just very, I'm very, very thankful and appreciative of the very, very nice words that we've gotten because it, it can be a very scary thing. Like when you press publish and you're like, man, these people are going to hear our conversations. Like I think the best, the best compliment that we've gotten, um, and you know who you are when you're hearing this. Now, you probably don't even listen to this long by now, but um, someone said it, it was like we were not someone. You're more than someone. You gotta, I don't even know if you had to clarify that. One of our that. best friends said. Yes, they, they said, um, you know, listening to your podcast was like us sitting down at like sitting down for dinner, like in your it living a, room. It was like a fire pit night with like you guys. Like a fire pit night like with that. you guys. And like that to me, because like. Yes. So it's been um, fun to hear you guys actually listening to the first four episodes and we're excited to continue. We're excited to head on to our next destination tomorrow, which is, which is Topeka, Topeka, Kansas. And we're so excited to see two of our really good friends that oh, yeah. we have met through Connor's work. So the first two friends that we saw were through my work and Copy and Corked. Now we're seeing friends through Constant Capital Group. So it's going to be a great time. We absolutely love them. And we're just excited to continue having you guys on the journey. So yes. thanks for listening to episode five. Well, I feel, I feel like we had it like, I feel like we got to, um, like close it out with like a couple like bullet points. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think so what bullet you got? points are um client experience mm-hmm. over everything. Cli- client client experience over everything, but don't let that don't let that dilute your results. If the expectation is set, it has to be met. Yes. And also with that, let your yes be your yes and your no be your no so that you don't sacrifice your personal happiness, health business values the reason that you started doing what you do in the first place because then it becomes all about the client and then you ultimately are just going to reach a point of burnout where you can't like fulfill your duties to the client as you promised which resources burnout you've talked about that before that book yeah, um, we'll there's also about that. there's also a great book i think it's um or it's by ritz carlton the ritz carlton experience it talks about how they manage their operations and set expectations to meet them great book so i think um and then spontaneity versus planning so if you are going to be spontaneous roll with the punches if you're going to be a planner that's awesome too and you're able to create a lot of relief for people have a mix of both though you know for 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 the person that's spontaneous create a plan hold it loosely yes and then for the person that's a planner why are you looking at me (laughs) (laughs) Because the planner sure had something to say about the spot, the spot, the spontaneous one. If you're a planner, be flexible. And, and I'll tell you what, you, you'll, you, and I've seen this a lot of the times too, where it's like when, when you travel, it's like people, are, yeah, be spontaneous. Like that's what life is about. But at the end of the day, man, you want to know where you're sleeping that night okay yeah, and you want to you want to know where the nearest gas station Maybe is plan like 24 to 48 hours in a week <laughs> yeah um so i think uh, that wraps up this episode of wine stains um caitlin final words yeah we're stoked that you guys are here and excited to continue and always open to your feedback advice we have not said this before but i don't think we have any reviews yet oh yeah so drop us a hold on no i got i got this down a review or two i got this ready smash that subscribe button leave a comment <laughs> down below let us know what you want to... And, and here's the thing. Again, it's an ever-evolving thing. Let us know what you want to talk about. We are we, we talk about openness and transparency. And actually, if you don't if you don't like it, don't listen. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just say that because if you like it, let other people know you like it and they'll listen to it. Too oh, you're trying to get more followers. No, 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 no. I know. I'm, I'm joking. I'm a copy 
you right here. And I know the importance of like, you're like, eh, should I listen to this podcast? But if someone else is like, hey, I liked it. It's cool. Then people are like, all right, I'll listen to it. You and know? grow and so. grow with us. It's an yeah. evolving thing. But you know what? If you don't, we're still going to be here. We're still going to be here. Gonna and we love you anyway. Yeah, we, and you go, girl. That for us. So anyways, yeah. we will pick things up after Topeka and talk to you guys more soon. So thanks for tuning in. All right. Signing off from the Ozarks. Missouri. Peace. Peace.